The world I see holds nothing that I want. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Beyond this world, there is a world I want. Hi everyone, <clears throat> welcome back to another episode and today we're going to continue with that theme, the year-long theme of stepping into magnitude and a big part of that is washing away the unworthiness. And so I think a lot of this show will be about, you know, unworthiness and miracles and washing away the unworthiness with the miracles. And yeah, I remember actually like, so I've been in Mexico here for like three months this time and I came from uh, our center in Utah. And right before I came here, you know, this inspiration hit to come down here and be of support. And basically I got extremely inspired and I was just so happy and then I would just be joining with uh, Deanna Markin like a few, two or three times before I came down here and I was just sharing my excitement and, and my inspiration and and yeah, I was just like exploding and then I remember a couple times in our joinings all of a sudden I would just kind of like go down or something or I don't know, it was hard to explain. I was like, what is this feeling? And then uh, Deanna basically sent me um, a Spreaker, and this is the video version of the same exact Spreaker. And the Spreaker is called Unworthiness, and, but the video on YouTube is called Unworthiness and Miracles. And it's just uh, like a little under five minutes, and, and it's David, you know, um, he's answering a question from the audience about unworthiness, about experiencing miracles. And yeah, I just, I want to start off with that, and I might pause and and speak on it, or might play it through. Hey David. Hi Cody. So I just wanted to share that I've been having a lot of fear and unworthiness come up around having miracles. Like it's, the miracles are coming in and now it's this whole wealth of, I don't know, just some kind of void or something that's scary to look at and to go into. And I was just hoping you could talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's something that all of us go through when we start to have mir miraculous experiences in our life. And it's just, it's, they are mind-blowing. They just, they totally transcend anything that you've had before. But, but the fear is coming from the unworthiness. It's like the unworthiness to, to behold them, to receive them, to fully participate in them. It's this deep-seated unworthiness that somehow we're not worthy of that, that love. And I, I work with different people over many, many years. Um, a friend of mine, Kathy Martin, worked with me for five years. And I remember when I was in, off in South America, I think she, she just sprained her ankle or something. And, and we talked over, over the phone and she just said, my gosh, this, this unworthiness runs so deep. You know, even what we would say, physical injuries or psychological states of suffering and pain, uh, they're all, like you might say, offshoots of this root belief in unworthiness. So, so this reminds me of what I was talking about on my last show about how, you know, growing up it's like had this pain and this physical seeming thing with this neck and the back and you know, I would always be looking down. Like it, now it seems so obvious, but before I would never have thought unworthiness. I didn't even know what unworthiness was, really. And, um, and yeah, Dave is just saying, you know, even physical injuries, it's like there are really no accidents. It's like it all comes from this unworthiness. And it's just really good to see and notice because, you know, it's like we don't want to put it on the body. Like I know if my neck gets tight or I get pain or headache or something, it's like remembering that actually it has nothing to do with my like sleeping position or, or whatever um, that I might be doing in form. It's really coming from this unworthiness. So I'm just saying for myself, it's like really good to catch, to catch now. 
The reason we need the miracles is to wash away the unworthiness. We need new experiences that contradict our self-concept, that contradict this very limited, unworthy sense of self that we've had. And it's true that, you know, the things that we think we're afraid of in the world, and even when people talk about relationships and fear of sexual intimacy, that's not it. There's, there's a fear of dropping the mask and experiencing what happens when that mask is entirely dropped. There's the fear of our own power, the fear of the power of our mind, the power of thought. It's, it's a fear that somehow this deeply rooted belief that we've miscreated or we've misused our power and it was such a frightening experience of believing we had misused power that we pushed it out of awareness and said, never again will I be empowered. Never again will I know who I truly am and the, and the magnitude that I really am. The ego is like saying, yep, you can play small and I'll tell you how to get good at playing small. It doesn't even care if you play big small. Like, you become a famous person and you think you're big, but you're still a big small. You know, you're, you're, now you're a big person, a famous person, an adored person, a, a, a respected person, an admired person. The ego's still sitting back there going, that's good, that's big small, that's good. You're big small now. You know, it's, it's just a tricky combination. So, ultimately, you know, that's really why you came here, Cody. You came here to, to, to let up that unworthiness. And ultimately, like we've talked about in relationships and fear of relationships, that's where the fear is coming from because, you know, to open yourself to the Spirit's use of relationship is to open yourself to the end of the ego. The ego cannot defend when you give over a relationship to the Spirit and let it be used for the Spirit's purpose. That's the fast track. That's like the super, super fast track to awakening is through that. And, and you can tell, that's when we've talked, that's where the ego is coming in going, Whoa, Nelly, <laughs> don't even go near that one. But that's what it's all about, it's just unworthiness. So it's my job to keep reminding you of how worthy you are. I get to do it all the time. <laughs> it's a great job, too. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, so even even this show, you know, it's like it's like I, I share these miracles and it's like it just strengthens strengthens that and washes away the unworthiness. Because I know like even on the show, like sometimes I'll get like scared. I'm like, oh what is that? And it's like I feel like it's what David is talking about. It's like the it's this unworthiness of the miracles and you know sometimes I feel like if I feel like I'm about to choke up it's because I'm supposed to share like a miracle and it's like oh there's like some kind of fear around that and then um but the good thing is it is a decision and the other day I just you know I woke up and then um and then I, I just took out my phone and I unlocked it and the first thing I saw was this video by Diana that said, unworthiness is a decision. And it's like, <laughs> I had never clicked on the video. I wasn't even searching for any of her videos, nothing. But it's like I unlocked my phone and that video is on my screen, like ready for me to press play. It's like it was already clicked on. And I was like, wow, OK, that's a good symbol. And then, um, and then guess what was really strong in my mind that morning? It was this unworthiness. So. I was like, okay, I'm going to really pay attention to that. That's a very strong symbol. And then I think it was later that day we had this meeting with um, a big group of us in the community. And each one of us was really um, sharing, like, what is it that we're committing to, to letting go of? And I think this was on Friday. And so what happened was we went around the room and then I decided to share and I said, I commit to letting go of this loop of unworthiness and everything that seems to come with that, like the lack, the victimization, um, the whatever, it's like all these things, like I really commit to letting go of that. 
And even today is like, you know, it's Easter, so it's a symbol of the resurrection of the mind. And, and yeah, it was just so powerful for me because it was like, wow, it's like what Diana was saying in her video. It's like unworthiness is a decision. And then in that meeting, I, I decided again. And then the next few days have just been so beautiful and so many miracles and, and you know, no unworthiness. And, and, and yeah, just some of these miracles and, and like holy encounters, like, like I had this experience too um, recently where, you know, I was in my room and I was meditating before going to bed. And then um, Zion was, Zion our cat, he was like right outside my door and he was just meowing like forever. You know, he was, he was just meowing, meowing, meowing. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna tune that out and I'll keep meditating and whatever. But I was just getting angry and angrier and angrier and angrier. And, and you know, we watched this movie with uh, David, I think like a month ago, it's called The Perfect Sense. And in that movie, there's a scene where basically everyone in the whole world is getting like really angry. They're getting really angry and they're like destroying everything and throwing things around and, and they're like in this rage. And it was, when we were watching that, I was like, wow, I can really like relate to that sometimes in my own mind. It's like, it's like sometimes this anger comes and it's like, I don't even know what I'm angry about, but there's always this same story that has to do with lack. And it's like what I said earlier is like this unworthiness, the lack, the victimization, the anger, it all feels like it's related. And basically what happened was, and it all feels like a decision. And so what happened was David was just saying like, you know, when we feel angry, it's really because there's an answer that the Holy Spirit is trying to give us that we're just not listening to and not wanting to accept. And basically when I was sitting on that bed meditating, I had already made a decision that, no, I'm not gonna let Zion the cat in my room. You know, that's what's best for me. But like without actually asking for guidance or without praying on it, I kind of just made that decision for the ego, for the ego's guidance. And so then I was just getting angrier and angrier and angrier and not knowing why, thinking it's really the cat meowing, but really what it was is that I was blocking out the Holy Spirit's answer for me to be happy. It's like the anger had nothing to do with the cat's meowing. It had to do with me blocking out the answer to happiness in that moment, which it's like we can't make any conclusions. We don't know what's gonna make us happy in any moment. That's why the guidance is so important. So basically, after like fighting myself for a while with this anger and whatever and trying to persuade myself that yeah he's just gonna stop eventually I was just getting worse and worse and angry and angrier so eventually I just stopped and I was like okay Holy Spirit what would you have me do you know? it's like I'm done fighting myself and then and then once I decided against the ego's decision then I could hear the Holy Spirit's voice and his guidance. And he said, let him in. I was like, okay, my way has not worked. I just don't feel happy. So I'm going to listen to your guidance and I expect to be happy by following your guidance. So I'm going to let him in. Okay. Keep an open mind. And I let him in and he just comes in and he just jumps on the bed right next to me. And he just curls up right next to me while I'm meditating and he just starts purring. And then I sink back into meditation and all of a sudden it's like my, there's like bursts of light in my mind and I just completely fall into like this peace and relaxation and I just, it's just total light. And there's no anger like whatsoever. It's like completely disappeared. I was like, wow, okay. It's like, I do not perceive my own best interest. You know, and it is so important to follow these prompts. And really, yeah, it was just a decision in my mind. And it's like, I really do not know what anything is for. It's like, you can't associate the happiness with the cat sitting next to me. Because, you know, I could have a cat sitting next to me right now or whenever, and I might not be happy. It has nothing to do with the form, but it really has to do with following the prompts and following the guidance. Because when we follow the prompts and the guidance, then we're identifying with the Holy Spirit instead of the ego because we're listening to Him instead of the ego. And then we're happy. And then, 
And then, yeah, it's like whatever happens after that, you know, it's like we just keep following the prompts. And, and it was like all things work together for good, too, because and I don't and I, and I don't know what anything is for either, because after that, I was like, OK, I'm going to go to sleep. And then I just lie down on my stomach and I just started to fall asleep. And then so Zion's had this uh, um, urinary infection and he hasn't he wasn't able to pee at all. Um, like he would try like 20 times around the garden and it just nothing would happen. And so, <laughs> so like he would be completely blocked. And then, yeah, I was just about to fall asleep. And then I feel something on my leg that's warm. I'm like, oh, what is that? And then, OK, Zion decides to pee on me and, and the bed. OK. The thing was, I wasn't angry at all. It was like, OK, you know? <laughs> it's like, OK, I'll get up. OK, Zion, you're done. OK, take all my sheets off. Just like there was no anger whatsoever, and it was like, all things work together for, for good. It was like a decision for the whole, me letting Zion into the room. It's like, I felt better. He felt better. He wasn't blocked anymore. He could pee, you know? And it, I wasn't angry because I was following the spirit. So it's like, it has nothing to do with the form. It's really, when we're following the spirit, anything can happen. And we're always going to be safe, but we're going to be happy. And that's basically what happened. So I was like, OK. And, uh, and yeah, so it was like, it was a decision for everyone. Basically, it helped everyone out, just me letting Zion in, in the room. So yeah, that was just a really cool parable and miracle for me that really showed me that, wow, it's like this worthiness and this happiness really is a decision of the mind. And it's like an ongoing decision. It's like a decision in every moment between the ego and the Holy Spirit. And then, and then, yeah, it's like when you're following the spirit, expect many miracles and holy encounters. Like, um, you know, David was saying, it's like this limited self-concept that we identify with. And that's the, really like the unworthiness. And so it's like we're guided to different projects and tasks and different assignments where we're going to loosen that unworthy sense of self and loosen that self-concept. And I've said before, like, you know, I used to want to be a, like a millionaire. So, so then I had these other concepts of like, okay, people that are involved with maintenance and, and what I guess you call blue collar and those kind of things. I was like, no, you know, it's like, it was like, no, that's definitely not for me. That's here. And I want to be a millionaire. That's here. It's like all these judgments and things tied in with the self-concept. And that's really the unworthiness. And so it's like, OK, now I, I come to this co community. It's like, I want to be happy. I don't want any of these self-concepts anymore. So it's like, then the Holy Spirit guides me to be over the maintenance of the house, La Casa de Milagros. I'm like, OK, I have no idea about anything with maintenance. And I, and it doesn't fit my self-concept at all. And it's like, OK, well, that's why it's guided, right? To loosen this unworthy sense of self. It doesn't matter if we have self-concepts for like wanting to be a millionaire or wanting to be a janitor. It's all unworthiness if it's like going with the ego's purpose. And so basically, yeah, it's like I'm over maintenance now. And then I made that decision for worthiness. And then it's like, and then I was just completely in the flow. And then it's like we had some workers coming one day. And there were like a bunch of different workers. And I was just having holy encounters with each of them. And then it's like our washing machine, this, this spring broke. And then so the washing machine guys came. And when they came, it was so beautiful. It's like they were so shiny. And it's like you could really feel the spirit. And one of them had this, this, these big sparkly eyes. like really like shining light in his eyes, like really shiny. And it was like, wow. Like, it's like, wow. I don't know. It was like amazing. It was like really bright, shiny eyes. You could totally feel the spirit's presence. And, um, and so, OK, they went to go fix the washing machine. And, and that was just a beautiful, holy encounter. And then, and then um, on the way out, I just talked to them. And they're like so happy. And they're like in this bliss and ecstasy. And, and then they're about to leave the house. 
And then um, they're right outside the gate, and we have this little painting that says La Casa de Milagros on the gate. And the, the guy with the shiny eyes is just like, he's, he's looking at the La Casa de Milagros, and he's like about to disappear. And I, I'm like looking at him, looking at the gate, and I'm like about to disappear. <laughs> and it was like really beautiful. And then, and then, okay, they gave me the receipt, and then right before they left, um, the shiny-eyed guy starts asking me questions. He's like, so what, what is this place, you know? And I, said, and I was like, it's a spiritual community. Um, and he said, so people from all around the world come here for the spiritual community? And I was like, yeah, it's like, it's like you already know, you know? And then, and then I told him we studied this book called um, A Course in Miracles, or in Spanish, Un Curso de Milagros. And he said, oh, my friends have been trying to get me to read that book. <laughs> And I was like, okay. Well, in my mind, I was like, you, it looks like you've been reading it and practicing it for like 10 years because his eyes were so shiny. And I was like, wow, okay, that's beautiful. Yeah, we've devoted our lives here and, uh, to, to practicing and applying that book. And, and then he starts asking like, oh, well, okay, well, can anyone come? And like, how long can you stay? And can you just come and go? And you know, he just starts asking more questions, and I, I just fill him in. And I'm like, yeah, let me know if you start reading the book. You know, stay in touch. And and yeah, that was just another beautiful, holy encounter. So it's like, it's like when we're following the spirit. It's like, it's like today's lesson. Like miracles are seen in light. It's like that was just a beautiful holy encounter. And a really nice reflection of mine too. Yeah, and then, you know, it's like we can all expect miracles and all expect like constant holy encounters. Like, it's just one example. But then I went to the gas station the other day, and, you know, while they were pumping gas in the car, I just went inside the little convenience store. And there was like a, like a long line to the, well, not that long, but like a little line to the counter, and the cashier, like she was just so sweet and so bright, like I could just feel it. Um, and I was just thinking, wow, she was like so sweet and everyone was just so happy. And then by the time I went up to the counter and I just started talking to her, um, yeah, she was like really sweet and shiny as well. And then we were just talking and she was like, yeah, you know, I used to live in the U.S. too. And I just love how down here, you know, it's like just so simple and it's like, we don't to think so much about ambition and pursuits and everything. It's like, wow, that's a really nice reflection. Um, and, then, and then, yeah, before I left, I just asked her, so what's your name? And she said, um, my name is Dulce. And Dulce in Spanish means sweet. And that's exactly what I was thinking. Wow, this lady's so sweet. And then she's like, my name is sweet. I was like, wow, your name is sweet. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know, it's like these. Holy encounters are so beautiful ones. It's like we're all worthy of these miracles and these holy encounters. And it's like we can expect them every day. And it's like, and it's like even for this show, like last week when the show ended, I was like, wow, okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm to share the miracles and strengthen them in my own mind. So I expect miracles the whole week coming up to the show. It's like I expect them because I need them for the show, you know? It's like, they're for the show. They're not my show. And if you want me to share miracles, Jesus, then it's like, I expect miracles. And, and you know, it's like, then there's the holy encounters. And, and yeah, it's just really beautiful. So it's like my prayer is really to experience miracles every day. Like every single day, we can experience miracles. And that's really what the prayer of my heart is, to experience miracles every day. And, and yeah, I share that with you guys too. It's like we can let that be all of our prayers. You know, it's like, I think Ken was saying, this is a course in miracles, not a course in hate, violence, and anger. It's like, it's like so if it's a course in miracles, then we can expect miracles every day. And 
We even had this uh, realtor lady down here. She helped us um, um, purchase a lot of our centers that, that are down here. And she told Lisa that she's been having trouble getting pregnant for like a long time. And so, and so basically after that, Lisa was like, well, listen, um, yeah, I forgot her name. But she was like, listen, you can expect miracles every day. You know, expect miracles every day. And she didn't say that in response to the lady not being able to get pregnant because miracles aren't about making something happen in form. She said it at a different time. But then um, what happened was the next time she saw Lisa, she was like, Lisa, I remember you told me I can expect miracles every day. And when, when I heard that, I was just like, wow. You know, I was like, wow. And guess what? It's like, I've been trying to get pregnant for like 10 years and I'm pregnant. You know, it's like after she heard that, wow, I can expect miracles every day. She was like, oh, wow. It's like her mind opened up to that possibility and all of a sudden like she just got pregnant after like 10 15 years of trying and unsuccessfully so was, like that was another really beautiful reflection and symbol so it's like yeah we are worthy of those miracles and it's like we don't have to make them happen either Yes, let me just see if I want to read anything. Yeah, this is the section, I need do nothing. And in this section, um, chapter 18, I don't know, I just really like this part where it says, you know, this course does not attempt to teach more than they learned in time, but it does aim at saving time. And by they, it means, um, you know, it's talking about people who have spent a lifetime in preparation for the holy instant and how it's talking about it doesn't have to be so difficult where you're just spending all this time fighting against sin and, and a lifetime of contemplation and long periods of meditation. It's like all it really is is I need do nothing. And I don't know, there's just something really inspiring about this. And it's saying like fighting against sin and long periods of meditation all such attempts will ultimately succeed because of their purpose. Yet the, meads, yet the means are tedious and very time consuming, for all of them look to the future for release from a state of present unworthiness and, inadequ and, and inadequacy. So basically it's saying the holy instant is available now. And it's like we can get to that by I need do nothing. It's like. We don't have to look for, to the future for release from a state of present unworthiness and inadequacy. So anytime we feel this unworthiness or anytime we have any kind of ambitions or we, we feel lack and we think, okay, if I get this, then I'll feel whole. It's like you don't have to look to the future for release from a state of present unworthiness and inadequacy. It all comes from this I need do nothing state of mind that helps us reach this holy instant and then we can hear okay what would you have me do from that place of i need do nothing it's like okay now what would you have me do holy spirit and then it's like that's the prompt that's the guidance and whatever we do from that place of i need do nothing it's not going to be us personally that does it and that's why we feel so happy when that happens so it always comes with just one happy realization. I need do nothing when the goal is finally achieved by anyone. So yeah, thank you for joining me again on Modern Mystics and I'll see you next week at the same time. And thank you guys so much.